Welcome along to Zooming with Driven. Lovely to have you along. This is our motoring podcast. All things motoring included. The show brought to you by Honda. Only one price, the best price. And as you can see this week, a, a different show, a different format because we have a guest on our, uh, well, I guess you can call it a couch, Miranda Easton, country music star, uh, to talk all things country music, but also your love of cars and more specifically the DMC DeLorean, which I am I cannot wait to find out about it. But we are going to go through the usual protocol, protocol, cover off some news uh, in the motoring sphere to kick it off. So let's get straight into it. Dean, what have you got, my friend? Yeah, news of the week. So Miranda, feel free to chime in about uh, any topics that uh, maybe hit a chord with you. But uh, yeah, definitely, uh, we just run through the, the, the last effectively seven days of news. Uh, probably the big news was the round one of Formula One. Uh, the podium was Verstappen again from Bahrain, Perez second, but Alonso, Fernando Alonso. Um, God, how many seasons? 23 seasons or something insane like that. And his 99th podium. So, um, yeah, I haven't actually watched the races yet <laughs> as it sits today. I've yeah. recorded it. But, um, yeah, Formula One's back. So, uh, as is Drive to Survive, yeah. the documentary series. So. Are you captivated by the world of Formula One? Um, I, I don't change the channel when it's on. So. Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> That's a good start. Uh, and the Ford Super, I'm excited about the Ford Supervan, uh, mainly because of the event that it's in. The Ford Supervan has been going for so many decades. I think there's been about three or four different iterations. Basically, it's a Ford van that runs a Formula One engine. And this, this is going back to the 70s that they built this car, kind of uh, almost as a demonstration of basically one of the biggest selling vehicles in the world, the Ford van. And the latest version, the iteration, is not put a V8 or a Formula One engine in it. It's all electric now. So 1,000 kilowatts, four motors, three motors. It's just an insanely fast car. I saw it. At, I was lucky enough to see it running at Goodwood Festival of Speed yeah. July last year. And it's just an incredible thing to watch. There's vents. It's not a van. There's vents in the rear. There's Venturis. And it's just such an amazing thing. And the sound is just yeah. And it's electric, but it's a sound of power and speed. So and that one of the quickest things, it was probably the top three, top, top four quickest vehicles to run up at Goodwood this year. And they're taking it to Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, the second oldest motorsport event in the world. Just the best. Behind the Indy 500. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's in June. Uh, and the Ford Supervan is being driven by none other than Romain Dumas, who is the actual record holder as well in the electric Volkswagen. I think it's the i... I always get them confused. It's not the IRD, because that's the tax department. It's the IDR. Yeah, right. So, um, yeah, uh, super fast van, super fast driver. Uh, let's hope the weather is good, because it can always be fickle up there. But, yeah, yeah Pikes Peak, late June. Elect even to think Pikes Peak going electric is an interesting thing. Now, yeah. we should we, before we are going to talk to you about your DeLorean in just a bit, but obviously it was kind of, the DeLorean was always a futuristic car, uh, hugely because of the films, Back mm. to the Future. Um, Never electric though. Is electric kind of on your radar? It's definitely on the radar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of places that do conversions around, and I have had a little look on the website. Yeah, so right. Maybe, maybe in the future, yeah, okay. might, might think about it. Yeah. Um, especially if down the track there's any sort of uh, extra taxes put on older cars. <laughs> yeah. Um, might <laughs> yeah. have to start looking that way. Um, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Aussie woman fights against a three hundred fifty dollar parking fine and five demerit points. <laughs> Interesting news story from Australia that there's these, I don't know, it's good and bad. There's these cameras in Australia now. New South Wales, we're, I think we're talking about specifically that take a photograph in traffic of you on your phone. Yeah. To deter people using and touching their phone, which I think for ninety nine percent of the time is a great thing. Just get people distracted. It gets people distracted, it gets them off being distracted and can concentrate on driving. Fantastic thing. Her defense after getting a fine, now the fine is like, what I've written. Aussie, $350. $350 yeah. fine and five demerit points. Now in Australia, you get 13 demerit points. So five is a pretty huge chunk out of mm. your license for, yeah, right. I think it's a three year cycle that it turns over. What's her excuse? Her excuse is that she was holding a children's bluey phone, uh. <laughs> little electronic kind of plastic phone. Yes. I mean, she's definitely holding it. Yeah. There's a photograph of her folding it, which will, will mm -hmm. pop up now, but it's not technically a phone. So mm -hmm. you could argue both ways. Well, you're still distracted because you're playing with bluey while you're driving. I'll tell you what's more distract it's distracting than playing with a bluey phone. The kids screaming because yeah. they don't have their bluey phone. Agreed. Just let her pass her the bluey phone so the kids shut up and are yeah. quiet in the car. 
you would imagine there's some reason she's got it. Yeah. I'd, 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 I'd sort of like to try and think maybe she was trying to calm the kids by turning it on or, or, or setting something up. The amount of times when I'm in a car and I'm actually like, oh, my little girls are like, dummy, stinky. And you'd be like driving, you'd be like this, where is it? Where is it? Did you say stinky? Yeah. <clears throat> my little girl's uh, cuddly is called stinky. Right. <laughs> yeah. We always name them, don't you? It's called stinky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, good luck to her. Good luck to her. Yeah. So we shall see. We'll try and keep track. The, uh, those stories are online at driven.co.nz, but uh, yeah, we'll... Keep track. Uh, that's where we do all our regular news. Totally. It is time now to uh, take a quick break. What we're going to do when we're back, though, is uh, catch up with Miranda, and we're going to find out about music. We're going to find out about this DeLorean, and then we've got a quiz, a DeLorean quiz, which I think I'm going to be at the mercy of. We'll see you soon. Wide open spaces, more faces. All the storms hit itself. Warm light squeezes through the blinds Nothing on my mind, there's nothing to be worried for For the first time, free falling no more Welcome back to Zooming with Driven, um, brought to you by Honda. And we are speaking to Miranda Eason, country music star from Christchurch. And I guess where we would like to start is how on earth did country music, being in New Zealand, light a fire in your belly? Yeah, well, I, I think I kind of fell into it. I studied music. I, I never really um, thought, oh, I'm going to be a country singer. I, I wasn't a massive country fan. I didn't sort of decide to do country it just um it just kind of I fell into it 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 kind of happened like I recorded some songs and um you know working with other musicians and everything in the studio that's just the sound that kind of came out right um so we just went with it yeah this is you on the cover of the reset magazine and it is absolutely stunning um one of the things you talk about in the magazine is agoraphobia mm -hmm. can you tell me what that is Okay, so for me, it might be a bit different for other people. Um, I, I guess the first thing people think of when they think of agoraphobia is someone who can't leave the house or get to the letterbox or, you know, go anywhere outside of the house, even a bedroom in, in some cases. But for me, it was more of a, a, a gradual thing where I started having panic attacks when I was a teenager yep. and I started to avoid the places that I'd had them. So my world kind of began to shrink a little bit because after a while you've had them in a whole lot of places so this to me seems like conflicting worlds you know to have these kind of um, anxietal pressures but then also be a star that performs in front of people up on stage doing covers like this yeah how do those worlds collide well it's very difficult <laughs> is it it's um you know there's uh, a lot of planning that goes into yep. to what i do and um I always like to know where all the exits are on buildings and, you know. And that's um, about getting through the situation so you can, you know, if you yeah. put those things in place and you can perform and do those things. So if, if I have a little bit of control, yeah. I, I feel okay. So if I'm performing on stage, I'm, I'm kind of in control. Yeah. Right? So I'm like the ringleader. So I guess um, I, I feel at my best when I'm performing. Yeah. And I can can kind of be free and yeah, that's so like almost your escape in some exactly. respects. Yeah, so I think that's kind of the where I get the desire and the pull yeah. to, to get that. So tell me, um, your New Zealand audience is different from your international audience. Where where are you the biggest star? Yeah, so uh, my music um, has been charting and doing well in Aussie. Mm -hmm. um, I guess over there they have um, more people and a bigger country yeah. scene. So um, naturally, um, it does better over there and also in the States. Yeah, sure, which is a huge market. Yeah. Is, it, is it really hard to get cut through over there, especially as a Kiwi? Yeah, well, I, I, I don't know if, maybe I was just lucky with, yeah. with one of my songs. I, um, I had a really great music video that was filmed here and, you know, people love seeing the New Zealand scenery. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I guess, I don't really know how it happened, but it, it just ended up on TV over there. And, right. Um, on a whole lot of networks, and it kind of just snowballed 
from there. And, and what is the attitude from their perspective? Like, who's this girl that's not even, you know, classic uh, a country girl from America? Or is it more like she's accepting our culture and our music and they love you for that? Which way does that go? Yeah, I think there's a bit of both. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of interest, like, um, you know, you know, this is different. She's a bit different. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and some people are interested in, in the story as well. Um, you know, dealing with a mental illness and they're so common and not too many people talk about it publicly. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess that creates a bit of interest as well. So what's your biggest song then? Um, I would say Cowboy Lullaby did quite well. Yeah. Um, the music video that did well was uh, View From Here. Yeah. So that one was filmed in Queenstown. Fantastic. So, Naturally, everyone's like, where's Where? that? <laughs> where's That's that? just Middle Earth, if yeah. you're wondering. It was filmed in Middle Earth, for sure. Now, the reason you're here is not entirely to talk about country music, although that does fascinate us. Um, your love for cars and the car you own. Yeah. How yeah. did this all happen? Have you always been a car person? I've always been a car person. I, I wouldn't call myself an, an expert, Yeah. but I, um, I know a, a little about a lot, I suppose. A little, you know. Um, Growing up really close to my brother, and he was a couple of years older than me, we were always, you know, making Lugo cars and playing with Matchbox cars and going to car shows. And, and yeah, I just kind of fell in love with 80s cars. I like the kind of boxiness of them and the, the clean lines. Yeah. Yeah. So it, how, did it get, how did you get on to getting a, a DeLorean, which is, of course, the Back to the Future car? Was that the catalyst? Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I would have been, you know, probably six years old when I first saw Back to the Future. Yeah. And I knew even then that I would get one one yeah. day. And, and your first one? How old were you? Um, that would have been about um, seven years ago. Yeah. Got the first one. Um, was enjoying it a lot. It was a 1983, which was a, a slightly rarer model than the others. They didn't make quite as many toward the end. And, um, yeah, someone came along and made a really silly offer on it. I think it was a, a Vodafone CEO. And, um, yeah, he flew down and he took it away. And <laughs> I was okay with it because I thought, I'll just buy another one and I'll have some money left over. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and did you? Well, I bought another one, brought it in from California. Yeah. Sight unseen. Um, it sounded good on paper, but it was, it was a lemon. It, um, it needed everything. And um, considering that the cars are stainless and they, you know, they don't really rust or anything, everything that could rust <laughs> underneath was, was just rot rotted out. And it was, it was awful. And it would probably have cost, I would say, anywhere around 60000 to bring it back up. To the, to, the, to the level I would want it at. This is so, a car from California. Yeah. Which is known for its dryness mm. and lack of rust in cars. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. It was, it was garbage. It was garbage. And it sat in the driveway and um, I felt really angry at it. And I just like, you know, like. You write a song about it? Not yet. But I, <laughs> I should. Um, so, yeah, the option was sell it off cheap and get rid of it or keep looking at it and, and feel gutted. So? <laughs> So I, I sold it off. I can't remember how much. It was like 20 grand or something. Yeah. Just, you know, get it gone. And um, the guy that bought it actually did end up putting a lot of money into it. And he, he has fixed it up, which is great. Yeah, cool. Saved, Keep them alive. Saved enough, yeah, yeah. But at the time, there was just no way that I could have done that. Yeah. And um, it was really disappointing. So, yeah, then I spent four years or so searching for another one and saving and you know, just like doing everything I could, researching the market. And, yeah. You know, I, I, if there was one for sale, I knew about it, you know. Um, were prices increasing throughout prices, that four years? Prices are going up, up like mm. crazy. So I think that first sale was, it was 50,000 or, or 60 or something, which at the time was amazing because when I bought that, that first car, I think it was 20 grand mm. on trade me. Yeah, but, right. but then you get, I guess, the Back to the Future anniversaries. And we had the yeah. 30th anniversary like seven years ago in, in yeah. 2015, which yeah. is a famous year in Back to the Future. Yeah, right. And yes. even just locally, I had actually drummed up a whole lot of interest with my first car. There were some news articles and there were things <laughs> I was doing in the community. So I kind of like, I made them more desirable here. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess I kind of screwed myself over a bit yeah. in that regard um, when it was time to be shopping again. 
Yeah. So have so, you got one now? I do. Yeah. It's yeah. A, it's a 1981, and um, it wasn't for sale. I I had to ask um, several times to try and get this car, and um, and and the guy said no, 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 I'm not selling it. He, he was a friend of mine, um, so I knew the car well, and I knew that it was in pretty much museum quality condition. Wow. I'd say almost. If it's not the best conditioned one in the country, it would be second. It's um, perfect condition. Yeah. Wow. And what is the reaction when you drive around it? Are people just like, oh, hey. Yeah. I mean, people will literally stop their car yeah. just to, like, wow. They, they stop in their tracks and people point and scream and, you know, yell back to the future or are just shook. Yeah. So it gets huge reactions and, and it doesn't matter if people are like, um, like five or six, or like a hundred. Yeah, yeah. You know, all ages, you know, everyone is keen on this car. And what an amazing thing to own. Are there any downsides to owning a DeLorean? Like, are there, are, you know, because great cars have character, they have good and bad things. Does it have bad things? Yeah, well, there's, there's a few bad things. I mean, it, it could be a little faster. Yeah. Um, what engine is it? Go. Do you know? It? DFV. Which was what size though? It's a, it's a little engine. It's not a big engine, V6. is it? V6. Yeah. Okay, what PR. size? Yes, yeah. PR. Thank you. Peugeot, Renault, Robo. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. 3.5? 3.5 V6? 2. 2.5. Yeah, it's a little engine. 2. Point something. 2.8. Um, Look at us go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not experts. <laughs> yeah, 2.8, 2. I think. Um, yeah. 2.85 litre V6. Yes. There you go. Yeah. There we go. So Combined 130 average. horsepower. Yeah, top, 130, top yeah. speed, 130 miles. Yeah, fantastic. So, yeah, I mean, it's not cutless, but, you know, um, it could be a little faster. Mm. Yeah, so that that's one thing. Yeah. Um, you do have to, to deal with, you know, the odd uh, comment from people that you, know, you do have to repeat stuff a lot, you know. Where's the flux capacitor? Um, you know, you've got to. <laughs> it would be annoying. It would, it would be really annoying if you didn't like talking to people. Luckily, yeah. I don't mind. But I can see how some other owners um, get sick of it and even sell their cars because the attention, you know, you, you stop to get petrol, people are just converging on you and, you know. So cool. Um, would you ever sell the car or is this, is this your car for life? This is, this is the forever car. It is. I'll never, never sell it. Are we allowed to know what you spent on it to buy it? Yeah, so I paid 130 Wow, it's a chunk of change. It is a chunk. But if you look at it over a lifetime of vehicles yeah. and you kind of keep it and restore it, then maybe it isn't a bad purchase. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess if I'm keeping it forever, it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't really matter what the prices do, whether they go up or down um, or fluctuate. It doesn't It doesn't really matter too much. It, it makes me so happy. Yeah, yeah, you sure. Know. And do you use it as part of your brand? You know, can you write it off as a, as a, as a tax deduction because it's part of <laughs> who you are and what you do as a, as a country singer? Not really. Does not. it cross over? Because I guess no. it's 80s. Well, I guess you'd say country music is, is timeless, though, can't you? You yeah. can't really put it in a, in, a, in a decade, can you? Yeah, I feel like the country fans are more pickup trucks. Yeah, of course. And, stuff and um, maybe less kind of 80s car people. But, um, <laughs> but that's all right. I've just got the two hats, so I just wear them both at the same time. Yeah, fantastic. Do you see any, have you ever, or do you see many other DeLoreans out in the wild? Yeah, occasionally. Um, I, you know, there is a directory of them in, in New Zealand. So I, I know where they all are. I know who owns them all. Um, I mean, I've owned two that are floating around already, you know. So if I do see one out in the wild, it's, oh, hey, that's Bob, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You just got recently from, you visited the DMC factory in the States? Yeah, so uh, we were lucky enough to go over a couple of years ago and went to Huntington Beach and, and had a look and had a wee tour. And yeah, the car park's just full of DeLorean. Really? It's amazing. Um, you can experience it yourself. Just go on Google Earth and have a look because they'll just all be there. All there, yeah. Right. And um, yeah. It's cool. uh, have you seen the new one? Because there's a new iteration. I think it came out last year, didn't it? Are you, what are your thoughts on that? Do you like it? Um, or do you like the history of where the, your generation, the 81s, kind of came from? Yeah, I do prefer the the original. Um, I'm I'm not convinced that the, the new one will really become a thing uh, or go far beyond a, yeah. a prototype, I think. Yeah. I think maybe just, maybe they'll make a couple. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure. I did order the Mattel 
Hot Wheels version of it though, because they thought, you know, why not? Even if it doesn't come about. <laughs> no, we get that. About, we get that. Yeah. That's, uh, he's so, big on figurines and toys. Uh, yeah, he loves it. Yeah. Just don't grow up. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's exactly it. Right, get into this quiz. See how we go. Yes, I have prepared a quiz for Sam versus Miranda on the topic of DeLoreans. Of course, it's a, it's the topic of the day for the moment. So, quick DeLorean car quiz. Do we Questions using... will start at easy. Okay. And get much harder. Uh, your name is your buzzer. Okay. Oh. Let's call out your name. Five questions. Hey, my name has three syllables. Yeah, it's harder. Oh, uh, how about me? Me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, five questions with a tiebreaker, as if we'll need it. <laughs> okay. All right, question number one. And I've learned how you respond to questions, so... Yeah, I normally I'll, just, I'll just buzz in. face you. Yeah. Yeah. In the Back to the Future movies, to time, to time travel, the DeLorean hit the speed of Sam. 88. Oh, Sam. Yes. Oh, 88. Thank you. You've fallen into my trap. Go. <laughs> <laughs> 88 miles an hour, or that would be um, 100 and... You don't have to do the conversion. Thing. Okay, cool. <laughs> I don't know. Carry on reading. This was my trap for you. Yeah. It's worked perfectly. Thank you. Uh, the DeLorean hit the speed of 88 miles per hour. Yeah. And to finish the question... <laughs> But to which year did it travel from and to first? Me. Uh, Miranda. 19, oh, first though? From like, and to. The very first, with Einstein or, yeah? yeah? Well, that's a very good yeah, point. That's, a, that's yeah, an awesome hey. technicality. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's with Einstein, um, 1985 to 1985, yeah. one minute into the future. Oh, oh. Um, was, that, was that the answer? But I suspect the answer is 1985 to 1955. Perfect. One point for Miranda. There we go. Yes. Wow. Okay. That one. That, That's fair. That, that one minute is an, almost a bonus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> yes. All right. Question number two. Again, names your buzzer. Get in quick. What makes time travel possible? Me. Miranda. The flux capacitor. Easy. Yeah. We yeah, talked okay. about before. The yeah, most yeah. commonly asked question yeah. to get, I suppose. <laughs> yes. Question number three. What engine was fitted to a standard 1981 DMC? Sam, it is a... <laughs> we talked about it. it's a V6, uh, 2.7 litre. Me. <laughs> Did I get that wrong? 2.8. Yes, Miranda gets the point. I'm going to give, uh, Miranda, I'm going to give you both half a pity point. Okay. Yes, yes you, yeah. you started off, it's a V6, 2.85 confusingly, oh, okay. so they kind of go to the, the decimal point. Yeah. Right. Bonus point. Yeah. How much power does it make in kilowatts? Mm. Um, 100. Sam, 100. Because 100, 130. Just wins. So it's 130 horsepower you said before. So you divide that by 1.34, <laughs> which ends you up at 98 horsepower. That's my final answer. Or kilowatts, is it, mate? Yeah, kilowatts, sorry. Do you want to go for a guess? Oh, no, don't ask me. That. Okay. All right. Sam, then 97 kilowatts. There we go. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a straight calculation, yeah. yeah. Um, just trivially, I don't know whether you know, tell me if you knew this or not, the movie car used the sound. From a Porsche 928. Did V8. They, yeah, right. And we found that from my digging research last right. night. So it obviously sounds like a V8, which it's not. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, Porsche 928. So I didn't know that. Another 80s Something classic. I didn't know. Risky business car. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Question number four. Almost a part two to the last one. What engine was first promised to be fitted to a 1981 DMC DeLorean? Because mm -hmm. they ended up with the PRV mm. V6. Which was kind of a little bit of a letdown, a bit of a disappointment. That happened yeah. in a few areas. It yeah. ended up with Cortina brakes. <laughs> so they would have promised a uh, Chev V8 in that. Told you they were getting harder. Sam. Chev V8. Chev V8 is incorrect, sorry. Is that? Yeah. What is that? Not even close. Uh, it was actually, unless you want to chime in with a random... Um, this is this is getting a hard one. Yeah. This could almost be the last one. Yeah, I'm not even going to take a stab at that. Fair enough. Because it was a rotary. A Wankel rotary engine was the first mooted engine. No, no way. It. It's incredible, isn't it? I didn't even know that. All right, question number five. Closest number wins. DMC claimed the DeLorean would do zero to, one si zero to 60 miles an hour, 97 kilometers an hour, yeah. in 8.8 .8 seconds. I was waiting for you to chime in. 8.8 <laughs> .8 seconds. That was the claim from DMC. Yeah. When Road and Track magazine tested it, how quick was its actual tested time? Closest number wins. Me. Me. Miranda. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, I'm just having a guess, but um, would it be closer to 20 seconds? <laughs> 20 for Miranda? I'm going to okay. go Sam 10. 10. Sam takes this one because it's 10.5 right. seconds. Yeah, Still right. quite lazy. I mean, we we test cars all the time, do 0 to 100 all the time. Mm -hmm. Anything over, anything that, that is slower than that 10 second number, it really feels painful. Yeah. Yeah. So for something that's with, with such prestige behind mm -hmm. it. Yeah it's, yeah, it's kind of a credit to the car in many yeah. respects, eh? Yeah. How cool. Yeah. yeah, definitely. All right, final question. Uh, it's a tiebreaker, but Miranda looks like she's got four to two at the moment, so she's claimed to win. We'll do the tiebreaker just Thank for you. fun. Uh, <laughs> again, it's all, well, I won't preface this. To generate the nuclear reaction the DeLorean needs, <laughs> Miranda. 1.21 gigawatts. Oh, I'll she'll continue with the question. Ah. You fall into the sand. <laughs> <laughs> the DeLorean needs 1.21 gigawatts. Gigawatts? Gigawatts. 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 As it says on your number plate, I wouldn't be that so blatant to ask a question that you know <laughs> well of. Generated by plutonium. Yeah. I'll reset. Generated by plutonium, a bolt of lightning, and once Doc travels to the future, what else? Me. Yes, Miranda. Mr. Fusion. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Far out. <laughs> well right. done. Excellent. Um, little little bonus uh, trivial piece. The DMC-12, which is kind of apparently never its official name. Yeah. Mm. Um, do you know why the 12, what the 12 means? Um, it's not really a bonus question. It's more, no. a, I only found this out last night, so I'm not professing to be a <laughs> knowledgeable on this, but... The 12 was its target price initially, yeah, 12000 Yeah, I was going to say Is that, that right? I, I yeah. couldn't quite remember, but yeah, it was supposed US. to be. Gosh, wouldn't that be great yeah. if it was that price now? All the new ones would well, be fantastic. It actually yeah. sold for when it finally did go on sale. They, they scrapped the 12 for obvious reasons yeah. because a DMC 25 <laughs> is to it. 25 yeah. grand is what it went on sale for. So, uh, yeah, congratulations, Miranda. You have held up your standards for DMC. And rightly so, too. Yay. Um, the full write-up uh, in Driven with Miranda and her um, DeLorean is going to be coming out on April 8th, which is... A little under a month. A little under a month, so we look forward to that. Um, and also, what's in the... Oh, your music, actually, I want to touch on that, too. Your latest song is titled Somewhere I Can Stay. And all your links go to MirandaEaston.com and check out her page there and you can see uh, and, and hear all the music that you need to right there. Uh, the print edition this week, Dino. Yeah, we've, uh, we've done a big uh, day trip doing the Golden Triangle. Now, this is a really popular transport route, route between Auckland, Hamilton and Tauranga. Yep. Tauranga? Tauranga? Tauranga. Sorry, I'm an Aussie. I've got exception there. Uh, um, and it's it's... A known trip, and we've actually done that in an MGZS EV electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. So we've done it with a partnership with Z Energy because they're opening up a couple of charging stations. So, uh, yeah, like we've what? just taken our long term MGZS and done a bit of a day trip all in one yeah. day. So it's about 450 kilometers. Yeah, their charging see. stations are amazing too. Charging Big, powerful around. ones. Yeah, 180 kilometers. Yeah, so, weapons. Um, yeah, definitely. Nice. We've uh, got the update of new. So that's our cover story. We've got yep. the update of new car sales for February. A little bit of a dip in the market. We drive the new Peugeot 308 GT. Got a review on the Mazda CX-5 Active. CX-5, one of the best-selling cars in New Zealand. I think it was the 13th best-selling car in New Zealand last yeah. year, even after the current model's been on sale for many years, three, four years. Credit to them too. Just going back, Dean, I keep looking at those pictures of that CX-60 that you yep. saw in Japan. That is a good-looking car. Yeah, Holy fantastic. Heck, it's perfect. Definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah. BMW M5 CS. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of an older story, but still a popular car. And in our new series that we've started in 2023 called Car Vid Classics, we look at iconic videos, ads, or uh, commercials, or anything that's on YouTube generally, uh, that's been famous over the last decade, been finally put on a YouTube. And this week we look at the iconic 75 second ad with Jean-Claude Van Damme and his Volvo Trucks ad called Epic Split. <laughs> you may remember two yeah. semi-trailer Volks, uh, Volvos going along and he puts his feet on the mirrors and yeah. does an actual split at, at 25 k's an hour. Yeah, we so, think it's CGI, but we're not sure. It's done really, really well. Yeah. 10 years on, it's really hard to tell. So uh, go online and, and vote. Check out that story because we've got a voting poll because it's it's the, the yeah. CG really stands up a decade on. Yeah, so, right. Um, yeah. 
There we go. Wicked. Miranda Eason, thank you so much for joining us. Nice. We appreciate me. your love for music and your enthusiasm in cars, and we hope it continues. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thanks. And that is it for Zooming with Driven for another week. Remember, you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or at driven.co.nz. Thank you for consuming, listening, watching any of our content. We appreciate your support.